God bless America. Hello, everybody. I am the Talk Radio Protege. This is the Protege Program. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been kind of chilly today in my neck of the woods. I hope you're all having a wonderful day weather-wise. Uh, I want to make a couple of comments on this story, and then I'm going to move quickly on to our main uh, column of the day. This is from the New York Times. They had an op-ed written by an ex-Supreme Court justice who is calling for a repeal to the Second Amendment. And this is important to talk about because there is a difference between the progressive leadership of the Democrat Party and some of the rank and file that likes the that likes the equality rhetoric, that likes the fairness rhetoric, that wants things to be fair and equal. You know, we, we did the video last Friday about the about the uh, cat guy, the cartoonist that did the cat video trying to explain the gun problem. The terrible analogy uh, in the first place, but in the second place, he's one of the rank and file guys that doesn't want to ban all of the firearms. He just wants the world to be a little bit safer of a place. And that's fine and dandy, you know. If this were a guy that understood the Second Amendment, that understood that the problem is not a gun problem, that the problem was an evil problem, then he would probably not be saying we need to ban certain firearms. We need to work to keep certain firearms off the streets and not worry about others. He probably wouldn't be making those distinctions. But he's a little bit uninformed, probably misinformed purposefully on the issue. Not that he is purposefully misinforming himself, but that others are purposefully misinforming him on the issue. And it's people like ex-Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens that are purposefully misinforming people on the issue. It's people like ex-Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens that really are calling for a blanket ban of all firearms, a repeal of the Second Amendment. These are the type of people, the leadership maybe not all of the rank and file, but certainly the leadership. It's the future, it's the future David Hoggs. The the people that David Hogg is going to grow up to be, that want to take away all of your firearms, that want to repeal the Second Amendment, that are actually doing the things that we make blanket statements about the left, saying that they do these things. That's not what I want to spend the majority of our time on today. I want to spend most of our time on this LA Times column. Anti-sanctuary state movement picks up steam in Orange County. This is why the title of the video is Sanctuary State uh, is Sanctuary Civil War. Because California can't even get their script straight when it comes to providing sanctuary for illegal immigrants. The in, in a couple of different places, this column uh, pro- provides you with a little bit of a timeline on what has been going on in regards to the sanctuary question in California. A week ago, Los Alamitos, they call it tiny, I don't know how big Los Alamitos actually is, it's probably as big as my hometown, voted to defy California's law protecting immigrants that are in the country illegally, illegal immigrants. It's kind of a weasel way of not using the phrase. If you scroll way down here a little ways, uh, I don't want to miss it. There it is. Uh, well, no, that's that's about the suit. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, da, 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 da. It, it's down here somewhere. I know that it is. Uh, Orange County Sheriff Sandra Hutchins on Monday began publishing inmate release dates, including those that are in the country illegally, illegal immigrants. That's just a couple of ways that these communities in California are pushing back against the progressive narrative coming out of the state capital and out of the big metropolitan areas. Other states, as we briefly paused uh, up here, like Texas and other red states, are jumping on to a lawsuit that's been filed by the Trump administration. These states have been filing amicus briefs, and organizations are looking for other California communities to get on board with this lawsuit. And I wanted to talk about this because I've been seeing a headline here and a headline there about 
divisions in California over the sanctuary question. And I was wondering how serious this is. And I want to say it was earlier this morning that the Drudge Report headline was, uh, was all about the divisions between different California communities on the sanctuary question. And I wonder if California is not beyond saving. If there are communities like Orange County and like Los Alamitos that are willing to defy the state on the sanctuary question, maybe California is not beyond saving. Now, I, I listen to a number of radio programs and get my news from, and get some of my news from various conservative outlets. One of those outlets was talking about the potential for California to divide itself along these political lines, for there to be a, uh, I guess you could say, a Democrat California and a Republican California. I don't know if this would be a North California, South California thing or not. But these, uh, these people were commenting on, for instance, the way that Virginia divided itself in, during the Civil War. West Virginia didn't exist as a state until the Civil War happened. So why not divide California so that the people of the state of California that are forced to, that are in a political minority that cannot be uh, adequately represented in our current system, why not give them their own venue of representation? Why not give the, why not give, South, I don't know what, where the geography lines is, but let's just imagine for a moment that it's Southern California that's underrepresented by the current system. Why not give Southern California their own senators in the Senate? Uh, we could we could pose this question about New York. Why not give uh, Northern? Why not give Upstate New York their own senators in the Senate? Why not give uh, Why not give Austin, Texas? You know, let's not just divide this over political lines and say that Republicans are the only ones deserving of their own senators. Why not give uh, Austin, Texas its own senator in the Senate? Because Austin, Texas is a severely Democrat uh, area. Houston, Texas, kind of the same way. One of the reasons we would not do this is because the House of Representatives is where we divide up, uh, divide up states more or less politically and say, all right, these... These counties are where Republicans are going to have representation. These counties are where Democrats are going to have representation. That's not the way that the language works. It's kind of more or less de facto the way that the system works. So, I guess, <laughs> I guess my opinion on it is that the House of Representatives, if the House of Representatives is representing California according to the way that the citizenry breaks out. If there are some Republicans from California that are getting elected, then the system is working. The Senate is, the Senate is supposed to represent, you know, from, from back in the times that the Constitution was originally, uh, originally ratified, the Senate is not supposed to represent the, uh, the issues of the citizenry of the state. They're indirectly supposed to do that. They're directly supposed to represent the interests of the state government. The senators of California are supposed to represent the interests of the state government of California, which would mean in the in the current climate that Governor uh, Governor Brown would be appointing senators to go to the state capitol. Now, um, I'd like to get your thoughts on a couple of things for this video, if you want to let me know in the comments. Do you think that California should be divided up into more, into two or more states so that uh, so that there could be more representation for the Republicans that live there? Do you think that other states should be divided up into more states so that there can be more representation for the political minorities that exists in that exist in those states? Do you think that the House of Representatives is an adequate uh, representing body for the political minorities of those states. You know, uh, Texas has a Democrat representatives, representative in the House of Representatives. Uh, California has Republican representatives in the House. New York has Republican representatives in the House. Uh, Republican strongholds in terms of states and senators and things like that tend to have a couple of Democrat legislators in the House. Uh, same thing for 
uh, Democrats. Democrat strongholds tend to have a couple of Republican representatives. Do you think that the that this system is working the way that the founders intended it with in terms of the House of Representatives? Do you think that the senators should continue to be elected by uh, by the popular vote? I, for one, think that the senators ought to be representing of the state's interests. There, there, is an, there was an adequate forum for the population at, at large to be represented in, on Capitol Hill, and that was the House of Representatives. The states are, have basically been pushed to the wayside uh, in more ways than one, not just with the senators, but perhaps that's a topic for another video. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Uh, I understand if the sound quality wasn't so good, I was trying to record in term uh, as the traffic was a little bit slow on my way home today and then it sped up and did various things. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I hope that you'll come back for our next report. That'll be tomorrow. I do have one update that it does that has nothing to do with politics, just with me. My schedule is getting a little bit more hectic. It's, it could be a little bit more difficult for me to get videos out at 6 p.m. Uh, I would like to get your thoughts. Would you rather see videos go up early in the morning or later in the evening? I, I'm not sure what kind of difference the upload time had on previous videos that I did where I was uploading really late at night. But, uh, but I'm thinking that it's going to be inevitable that I'm going to have to upload videos on a different schedule. So let me know what your thoughts are about that, uh, when you would like to see videos go up. If, uh, because if the timing doesn't matter, then, you know, I'll just schedule videos to go up whenever, uh, in the following day, maybe in the morning of the following day or in the evening of the day that I record the video. Uh, recording is going to be, ch probably going to be changing the times so I figure the upload date, the upload time is going to change as well. Let me know what your thoughts are on all of those things. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll come back next time. Until then, good night and God bless.